We're back on the road this April with our live show, Cocaine Cowboys. If you want to hear the story of Ireland's love affair with Colombian powder and those who made millions in the gold rush, join us in Galway's Town Hall Theatre on Saturday 6th of April, Killarney's INEC on Saturday the 13th of April. Tickets for Belfast's show have sold out on Ticketmaster.ie, but limited availability remains at ulsterhall.co.uk. That's ulsterhall.co.uk. There have been complaints about your glasses. Yeah. Emer, he went out onto Talbot Street the other day and found himself a pair of dentures, right? <laughs> we saw it on Instagram. And I scooped, did you see? I scooped the editor of the Sunday Indo who was going to Alan English <laughs> told us that he was just about to put it up on social media oh, that God. these dentures had been found and we scooped him. Yeah. On my picture. But he posed for it. But. Mm. I'm just saying to him, I bet you if he goes out and has a good route around, he'd find a pair of glasses better than what he has left. Absolutely. And considering the amount of shops we have on Talbot Street that yeah. do all sorts, like well, you okay. definitely haven't tried very hard to get them fixed. So he, had got the, he had the plaster, which you found on your desk, gross, <laughs> yeah. by the way. And he said it was somebody Fancy. else's, which even... Even grosser. Yeah. And then he admitted that it was probably from his glasses just, in the end. I just proved, so obviously you wouldn't be aware, but Nicola constantly talks as if she's viewable. Uh, despite the fact that the vast majority of people listen, listen to the podcast yeah. okay. with no vision. Well, I think anybody uh, listening, not visualising or not watching this, <laughs> let's visualise a man with a pair of glasses on with just one arm on them. No, I mean, I haven't seen anything like that probably since the 1980s. Now, I hope this clip of you now goes up on Instagram uh, on Crime World. And you see, it just all it'll prove is how humble and <laughs> modest I am and how unconcerned about my appearance I am. Yeah. Yeah. To some. Well, I also think that you have to have a bit of pride in yourself. <laughs> I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> you're a senior editor, Niall, and you're going around with no, well, with only one arm one on your arm glasses. Well and, on and they could do it a bit of a wipe as well. I don't mean to really call you out. glasses and he never bought two pairs of them, which I think is absolutely yeah. like... I know. You if know. anybody from Specsavers is listening... Yes, we, can... we could be sponsored by Specsavers. <laughs> you get it. I got my glasses in Specsavers <coughs> in pairs. Yeah. Mm. And I have sat on one pair, but I still have these ones, so it's grand. Exactly. No, I'm being very busy and I'm going to go into next week. I'll He's be just looking so absolutely effing fun. important that he can't exactly. get his glasses. I know, I know. Most people exactly. take a week Look. off to go to Spain. Yeah. I was taking yeah. a week off to go to Specsavers. You know, uh, both of you know as my underlings how hard I work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You're going to be on your own tomorrow because we're going to Galway. I know. Yeah. I was saying to Niall, would you trust him driving in a storm? I don't He's not driving, I'm driving. Okay, yeah, because yeah. I was going to say that's a bit no, worrying. No, no. <laughs> I absolutely would not trust him driving in a storm or pretty much driving in any which way. It's the yeah. way you can't sort of see pavement or, or work out pavement road, road pavement. Yeah. Well, well I hope he's not wearing those glasses. Yeah. Anyway, if, it's, if he's going to be driving. His dodgy eye. Yeah. yeah. So, We've all had a busy week. It's Friday Mm -hmm. afternoon here. And uh, the I actually just pointed out in a really academic fashion that it was a good week for the goodies and a bad week for the baddies. There was so many seizures. So many seizures. Yeah. So very philosophical of you. (laughs) But yeah, no, there were. were, It was a particularly busy week. Uh, There were 10 firearms and I think 5 million euro worth of drugs seized over the last week. And they're all in Dublin as well, mostly in West Dublin. Um, but I suppose the one that we're focusing in on was the seizure on Wednesday in Clondalk and there was four homes raided and I think there were seven firearms seized. Um, I think 200 grand worth of drugs and 100,000 euro worth of cash and there was also a lot of money frozen in a bank account and of course that's been linked to the family gang who we've mm. obviously written a lot about. They're notorious heroin dealing gang in West Dublin. Um that's a lot of firearms. A lot of firearms, yeah. A lot of firearms. There was three other firearms seized in separate um, uh, raids. Oh, so linked Dublin. to them. Um, I don't think that's linked to them now, but they it, it was kind of, mm. that was the most prominent in the week. Um, but did not, the other raids weren't linked to them as far as we're aware, but this one is obviously the biggest of the week. Seven and firearms. they are the top targets of the Drugs and Organised Crime Bureau that has been sort of well um, said. Yeah. Um, they yeah. are... Not just worth that. how much? What well, we I mean, they're, they're, I them? mean, there were twenty million, a twenty year? million turnover at at one point, and that was probably before recent years, which you would imagine mm. that it's that it's escalated. And um, I think as well as heroin, which they really made their name and became mm. the number one suppliers in the country, without a shadow of a doubt, they've also been 
become major players in the cocaine trade, you know, particularly in the last few years. And also, I think you see those firearms that the, they are in the firearms business in a big way as well. Um, the family, despite their maybe their size and the, the, the scale on which they operate, they haven't been linked to a lot of uh, gun murders, though, they're, but they are heavily involved in in the gun business as well. Are they weapon stealing or? Well, that that is definitely something that they've been linked to, you know, um, to weapon stealing because seven firearms um, would be a lot for mm. you know to have on on for your own personal use, even for for a gang operation. And again, you see, even with those these seizures, there's a very specific mo. You wrote about it. Was it two thousand? 16, was it? That I wrote about it. Like when you did that eight, eight um, special, I think, on the family. It was certainly in the, uh, maybe it was a little bit later than that, maybe 2018, because okay. it was kind of uh, focusing on them because they had made hay with the fall of the yeah. Kinnahans and with yeah. the feuding that had gone on. And while resources were dragged towards the North Inner City and towards the kind of the takedown of the Kinnahan mob here, they had sort of... Escalated. Escalated and, and taken over. And, and, and you see, even back then, and that's six, seven years ago, whatever it is now at this stage, they had a very specific modus operandi where they were storing guns and drugs in, uh, mostly in people in the middle of addiction. Mm. They were being stored all in West Dublin locations and they really had a, a method that they used that was quite different from the Guinnahans. Like it's also believed and I think has been shown and some of this we can't get into very specifically because there's court cases ongoing, mm. but they have a different uh, method of supply than the Guinnahan op gang. I mean, a lot of the other gangs in Ireland um, ultimately relied on kind of that same super cartel in a broad sense, but the, the family seem to have had their own suppliers, some of them through the UK, some of them through... Uh, Turkish mafia gangs based across mm. Central Europe. And, you know, they, while they were all using various methods to bring the drugs in, they also seem to have sort of specialised in bringing drugs in on planes. And there are court cases ongoing, but that that seems to be a whole, they were kind of a whole separate network, I suppose. They've never left their area. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're not, they're not like, even though they are now sophisticated enough, I imagine, to operator direct from afar mm. they have remained within the West Dublin area which where they have this control even though they don't murder people yeah yeah well that's, they've nearly. obviously yeah they've kept their heads down yeah. they, they're known for doing business among themselves and obviously not getting involved in in anything that might bring too much heat on them heat on them yeah but isn't it amazing how you know what probably started off as a tiny little operation has become, I mean, we're talking, they were valued at being worth whenever I wrote that piece, which may have been 2018, which yeah. is now six years ago. It is. Thank you. Hey, well God, done. I got that well done. right. Um, they were at that point valued at about 20 million turnover a year, which is an estimate. I mean, it's so difficult to yeah. pick a figure from the sky, essentially. But that had come from a kind of a, a an investigation into their network and what was suspected to be their annual. So that's 26 years ago. You're talking about they could have turned over around 80 million. Yeah. Well, they could have turned over 20, 20, <laughs> six, six by 20 be 120 million. Plus the 20. Yeah, 20. Yeah. Um, no, so 120. Thank you. Yeah. What did I say? 80. Wasn't such yeah. bad. It was not bad. It was. It was really, really poor. That's really what I was <laughs> you, Were you in remedial maths? No. no, no were you Emer? No, I did ordinary. Yeah, I actually now. wasn't either, which is no. extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's, is it hard to do foundation maths? Maybe not. I'd find it hard now to do it. I, I've lost any little bit of skill I had with it. It's just, it, it absolutely Lack of blindsides me. Yeah, that's why you have your understudies like Niall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 no, just, well, look, I, with his goofy glasses. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I think the, the, the family gang have, have generally, um, when they have had these seizures and they have had these, there's been major drug seizures over the last number of years, always linked to them, but it never seems to go up the line um, mm. that that there tends to be people that have sort of really are the stores of the drug yeah. or are caught red handed. Mm. There haven't been the middle manage, management of that gang haven't come before the courts no. and certainly not the very top level of the gang. That said, um, there are some court cases ongoing and there is also major uh, investigations by the Criminal Assets Bureau mm. that are ongoing that would 
that are targeting people at the top of that. They're trying to dismantle the family. I mean, this is not something that can happen overnight. This is a gang that has been 20 years plus in the making. You know, they're quite sophisticated. They have their money laundering arm. They have their connections with the Turkish and, and European suppliers. And they're dealing in all sorts of drugs and guns. So it's not something that's going to happen overnight. But it's this targeted, uh, repeated yeah. Kind of, they come back for more of the Guardi, they keep coming back for more and they do chip away and they do eventually. I mean, there's going to be one winner in this, yeah. you know, war between the guards and the family and it'll be the guards in the end of the day, it'll be the state, which we found over and over again. But Emer, I suppose on that, those searches yeah. came up with the goods. I mean, that's really good intelligence yeah. to know when to go into those properties. We know that the family use a lot of properties mm -hmm. in the area and they probably, you know, create stash houses in homes that would be seen as, you know, been lived in by somebody who might be just like a street dealer of even. Well, that's so it, yeah. to have that targeted attack, to come out with that bounty. Yeah, it's a lot. And there was obviously millions of euro worth of drugs seized this week. It was, I think the the main haul in terms of the Clondalkin family linked one was the, the guns, but yeah. there was a million euro worth of cannabis seized in Dublin Port. Um, it was hidden in garden supplies and there were actually a person has um, appeared before the courts this morning in relation to that. So right. it does, yeah, there was massive seizures this week. Um, there was also last week a firearm seized in a house in Clondalkin in a separate operation. We're not sure now if that is linked to the family mm. gang, but there is for his particular focus on the West Dublin area, there was two guns as well seized in a Bally Fairmont Park. Um, so, you know, it's it has been a good week for the Guardian. Very much so. You know, I mean, those that that will make it, you know, if they continue in that fashion. I, I just can't think this year of big firearm seizures. Obviously, oh. sometimes they will get a kind of a weapons arsenal and warehousing or something, but that's going to make for really good figures at the end of this year, even those two weeks alone that you're talking about. Yeah, and you can see the pictures. Or we have the story obviously up on sundayworld.com. It's no mean. Yeah. You know, it's, the hall is quite impressive looking and even like one of the gun seized was a semi-automatic machine gun, you know, so it's, it's serious yeah. business and obviously there's, you know, a strong intelligence operation going on at the moment in relation to that. Um, there was no arrest that we know of as of yet in terms of the, the family linked operation, but there were arrests in, relation to some of the other seizures as well. And in two cases, there's two men appearing before the court. So mm. it's obviously an ongoing operation. I suppose what happens in these in these investigations is sometimes they will hold off and wait for direction mm. from the DPP when it comes to firearms. I mean, we know that there's sort of ballistic investigations into those firearms and they will send them off to experts to see if they can prove of those firearms being used for any murders, you know, how long they've been on the scene. Isn't there a record ballistically with the way the bullet comes out there of is, the chamber? Yeah. yeah, it's a kind of like something like a fingerprint is yeah. it's described and you, you, you see it all the time. I mean, we've we've heard of guns being seized and they will be able to link it to a murder over a decade earlier yeah. because it, it's basically like a fingerprint. I mean, interestingly as well as finding the the guns and, and, and money, they also seized recovered tracker devices again, oh, which we've seen. The news, yeah. Yeah, and the tracker devices, if you look at some of the hit attempts on the Hutch faction, those tracker devices ultimately yielded huge amounts of information yeah. over a period of time because they can they can then be triangulated with phones. You can then track the tracker. Yeah, you where track, it's been. Yes. Yeah. We, even uh, Mr. Nobody, Declan Brady, was ultimately undone by that very recently where they were able to show his phone was next to a, mm. a tracking device. So those, those, but those, that sort of evidence that came to, to court almost seven or eight years after mm. it was seized. So phones and tracking devices. The tracking devices are used for, you know, one of two things, either to put on a car of a target that they want to find an opportunity or build up some sort of, you know, intelligence on what their activities are during the week to try and find an opportunity to kill them. Or in the case of Bomber Cavan, I don't know why it was the first time I really yeah. properly considered it. He used to track his own drugs and his own money. Yeah, yeah. so they're tracking. sure yeah. that they were where he thought they were supposed to yeah. be. Okay. So nobody was ripping him off along okay. the way as the money was making its way back to Holland or the drugs were making their way into the yeah. UK. And again, the family have a 
so I mean, what what you wrote about at the time, they used these kind of vulnerable people mm. who who rather than trusted associates to do a lot of the movement. So it may be that the tracker devices are used to keep track of mm. of, of, their, of their product of their product when and, it's not in, yeah, in you in know trusted hands. Exactly. Um, so that that those things as well, and we saw this in in all of the the major investigations mm. in the Kinnan Cartel. What they do is they get a tracker. Then they have to go canvas CCTV off all the businesses along that route. They have to go in. Most, a lot of businesses or, or houses, certainly in mm. certain locations, will say, I don't want to give it to you. So they have to go to a judge, get a warrant, go back, seize the thing correctly. Then they have to look through it, look, try and match the times up. Then they have to try and match that with mobile phones. And all of that takes a huge amount of time. Mm. Um, but we saw the huge results that 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 it did yield over time. Yeah, in, yeah especially in some of the feud murder trials. Exactly. It's, it's obviously the, an indication of a serious outfit that you're dealing with Isn't as it? well. Yeah. And yeah. the results of 67,000 euro worth um, frozen in a bank account. So it, yeah. it indicates that you'll have the cab coming in now, having a look at where else Abs- that bank account links. And Absolutely, and I'm I'm sure there's going to be people. Yeah, you know, there's obviously there's going to be people, people who are going to be there. You know, it's kind of shows the scale of. I'm feeling actually, the, the criminal assets bureau are already on the. Yeah, they are on they the are on them, yeah, case. Yeah, yeah, they sometimes do a multi pronged. Just um, a conversation I had. I was on a, a show on the BBC in the north earlier this week. And they were talking about uh, mug shots. Yeah. It's slightly different now, yeah. but nonetheless. So the PS and I were saying it was their policy basically not to give out any mug shots. They'd take each case by, you know, and, and, and they were asking me basically about, you know, what it's like to be sort of reporting mm. without this facility. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I think, right, you're here. You're mm. pretty much dealing with three different jurisdictions when mm-hmm. you're looking for information about cases. And you have the NCA in the UK, you have the PSNI and you have the Guardi Siakona. The NCA are the best. They are the best. Yeah. Gold medal to the NCA. Yep. Mm-hmm. Because when they have a conviction after trial, yeah. they provide you with the mug shots, yeah. with the information, recordings, mm-hmm. recordings often videos, yep. you know, arrest videos, raid videos, pictures from raids. Yes, sort of, social media pictures. and All everything. of that, right? Yeah. So we love the NCA. Yeah. <laughs> Clap, clap, clap to them. Why wouldn't they want to show their good work as well? You know, because it's obviously a win for them. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what I think. Why wouldn't they? Mm. Because of, so that, I mean. With the Garda Shikona, who I have to say, Mm. but they're in second place of a very bad two and three lot. I I would say that they are, yeah, they're definitely ahead of the PSNI. They're ahead of the PSNI because while they also don't probably give out mug shots and stuff mm. like that, they are certainly providing you, you're sitting on the news desk, you're seeing the information, the press releases are coming in. They're busy with their information, but they're giving stuff. Are they doing any follow up on convictions? Well, they, I mean, they probably aren't doing as much as the NCA for sure. But you've seen they, like in terms of social media, they, they, for example, putting out the pictures of the guns. I mean, that has become more and more prominent, Mm -hmm. putting out pictures of the seizures of, of, of drugs, you know, even doing regular updates and local updates on the on their social media channels. The guards have really changed their attitude. And Emer, how does that help with the job? Because the website is a monster. It is, yeah. And it's it's reliant on live breaking news. So I suppose as Ma said, they, they have an Instagram account now that's quite busy and you do yeah. get the quirky little stories about they seem to like putting up the stories about, you know, learner drivers who've tested positive for cocaine and are yeah. driving unaccompanied and things yeah. like that. I've seen so some of those sort of yeah. things. You do get that and you do get with the drug seizures, a lot of them do go up on their channels. Sometimes you're like, Well, you're not just to attach it to the email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we can save it in. But um no, it it obviously does help, but they're and obviously the likes of what we're after talking about yeah. there, the gun seizures. So they have given out pictures. Of the yeah. Guns. yeah. But they're not saying these are linked to the family gang. No. no. This oh, is our not. own information, our own sources of yeah. journalists. Yeah. But however, they have improved even in that, they will say, this is part of an, opera, an operation targeting organize, yeah. an organized crime gang in Dublin, for example. Yeah. So they do give a bit more information than they used to, which they never used to do. Yeah. So they have. They've improved from what basis, do you recall? Because, I mean, you were on the Herald News desk back in 
Oh yeah, and you it would it'd be like getting an interrogation when you ring to ask a basic question about a road crash or something yeah. like that. So no, they have improved. Um I think the the social media aspect of it in particular has improved, but I do always feel like there's a there's a kind of almost aura of mistrust or something there. Mm. And I feel like they could utilize the media better. Yes, exactly. You know? And I mean when you look at the NCA, we were only talking about it at lunch and Europol, they're producing their own podcasts now yeah. about their investigations. Yeah. They're actually creating content for themselves, videos and all the rest of it. It's the way forward. Mm. But the guards, I think, uh, what I feel is they have, I'm not like looking at the stuff coming in on the news desk. It's obviously getting better and it's come, it's been pumped in. So, and that helps you. And it also is public interest. What are they doing? I mean, they're, 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 they're being paid on the, on the taxpayer's dollar. But what they are doing, I thought recently is providing people for interview quicker. So if you, you know, you're saying that, you you know, you're interested in, say this operation is finished and they have jailed people because really everybody's only comfortable with cooperating properly when that happens, when yeah. you have a conviction, when you're not going to risk doing anything for a, a forthcoming court case or, or anything like that. But they are providing good interviewees mm. yeah. of late. They are. And press know. trained and... Because, of course, you used to get it, like, and it's been the subject of many sketch shows, hasn't it? Yeah. The, 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 the vehicle, of course. Yeah. Famous. So you have, uh, um, you know, David Max Savage or whatever, like, they've, yeah. they've that kind of, so you, you used to have the local guard saying, you know, to be somebody is after doing some incredibly violent and risky crime and all he'd say was a vehicle was spotted leaving the scene. Yeah. And yeah. so they, they, but I mean, they are changing and, and engaging. The PSNI are very, very difficult to deal yeah, with, they I have to say. Are and I mean, even, even and just. Seen, yeah, we've seen that obviously last week with the Jeffrey Donaldson story. Yeah. Uh, you know, to get it, you know, yeah, the. They are. Um, so, what is their problem? Is it a mistrust? Is it? Uh, yeah, it is. Are well, they trying to be? Well, well do you see, they, 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 well, it. Ha- I mean, look, the the history of policing in the north is so different than than ev- everywhere else. You know, it became a political football. The, obviously, the the RUC were utterly mistrusted by half the community up there. The PSNI were a new branch of that, and instead, unlike you know, the, that kind of separation of powers. They became a, a, a police force that was particularly responsive to politicians. Mm. And as a result, I think they became very conservative and, and PC in terms of what they share because they're so vulnerable to criticism in everything they do from... But they need to loosen up if you ask me. Well, yeah. they may be... What from, about the press releases from the PSNI? Do you see them? Do they come in directly to you? They come into air general email or the yeah. our, our reporters up the north would get them as well. But... I feel like they they send out like they would tend to put a lot of their st- stuff on Twitter as well, yeah. but it's it's all just based on what the, their needs. I, I don't think there's much cooperation. It's all about it appeals. To, we want to know exactly, if somebody yeah. will come forward with yeah. dash cam footage, that kind of stuff. Exactly. And you don't see photos much and there doesn't seem to be much of an open relationship in terms of, um, I don't know if they check out media queries as mm. often as, in fairness to the guards down here, you need a specific day and time, but they will look, look, it into, look yeah. into it for you. Whereas I don't know if that happens up to North. And I think they close. They close. The yeah, yeah. So well. the real Do problem they? we have as yeah. a Sunday paper yeah, is that they're not. Uh, they're very, very like it's, it's crime is a nine. Uh, crime oh, uh, is a really? nine to five, five yeah. day business. Five seriously, day week business. seriously, especially in the in the <laughs> area that the P is nine. Exactly, with. how crazy. <laughs> yeah, and does nobody even leave? Is there not even a mobile number I, that I you can think ring there for is, emergency? But it's, there is. it's very difficult to to, to it's get. It's like to the get. Carlsberg complaints line. I just <laughs> couldn't believe it. I think it was my first year in the Sunday World, and it was a murder on a Saturday, and I was told by the reporter up there, sorry, the. Pre- press office aren't coming back to me because they're closed and yeah. this was an actual murder yeah. so I couldn't believe that so yeah. I mean one thing the guards have been doing recently and it's always been a huge source of controversy and rightly so um, has been the if you see in we've had an awful lot of road uh, tragedies yeah. this year alone I mean everybody will know know of them and, and have seen them um, what has happened in recent times and I think it is a much better system is that the guards will provide a picture of mm-hmm. the victims. Yeah. Um, and they provide that on the basis that reporters aren't going to family members yeah. looking for pictures. And yeah. that I think has been quite successful. Yeah. Also, people are not being named. Uh-huh. You know, all the media will will name the per- name the victims together with a picture provided 
by the family through the guards and that look that that has been a we've had we've heard people and every newspaper person must have a a little moment of going is this right I when, know, of when, when that when people go looking for pictures under those circumstances yeah. so I think that's been a really progressive thing but turn that on its head to the mugshots which yeah. is the point of this yeah. because this came up in 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 the north um I actually don't even know how it came up maybe you you know to do with somebody being released from prison wasn't it and who there was never been a picture of never been a picture maybe they had a mugshot the victim wanted a picture of the person put out as far as I remember they said it was their policy not to put out mugshots now both myself and another journalist from Scotland who were on talking about it were sort of saying you know there's so many reasons that you probably should. Firstly, justice has been served. So yeah. you're not looking for the mugshot like in the States when someone's arrested. Yeah. Yeah. Like the States is a completely different ballgame. Yeah. I mean, the States is kind of wild west when it's, it comes to media, yeah, isn't it? It, it yeah. is. Anything goes really. It's Anything scary. goes. Yeah. Because their libel laws are so different. So we're not just governed by the, the Gardaí and, you know, uh, what's your favourite thing? The the data, the, the uh, protection, uh, data rights. protection rights. No, we are governed strict. in in Ireland by, and the Northern Ireland, our, our colleagues are governed by press councils, ombudsmen, all the rest of it. We have signed up to agreements. We have strict libel laws. Mm. If we get something wrong, we're yeah. down in the four courts, yeah. right? So that's the way it goes here. The States is a complete, there's no point in even trying to compare us because as soon as somebody is arrested, they're... Yeah. Ping, they're out there. Well, you remember the on Donald, chat shows. The Donald, yeah. was straight away, he was his mugshot. Do you remember the guy who was arrested and he became like a model because he was yes. so good looking? Yeah, he married a, some He became a celebrity era. because of his mugshot. In America? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember the good looking criminal? Yeah, yeah. He, married, he married some, but anyway. He probably ended up in a dating show or something no, over there. <laughs> probably did, or yeah. sort of big brother or something. But yeah. anyway, um, but the point of the mugshots is, on a more serious basis, that so the public... The, the whole country can't squeeze into a courtroom. You know what I mean? I know justice is done in public, but there is a certain amount of people who have the time, the ability, the facility, whatever, to get into that courtroom and to sit in the public gallery. It's a tiny amount, probably 20 people. So the media are there then to record it for the the other yep. 6 million or whatever it is, people out there. And I think that a photograph of somebody convicted of a crime yeah. should be given out in the public interest. Yeah, We don't have to then, as a media, go around scrabbling around, looking through Facebook photographs. We have the same thing on the other side, victim or perpetrator. We get it wrong and it's if it's a perpetrator it's a and it's yeah. a disaster. I think there's a, there's a very strong case to be made for it. Remember, like, if you commit a crime and you're a criminal and you go to court, like, you give up your privacy because... It, what's happened is heard in court. You lose it. Yeah, you lose it as a result of 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 your your criminal conviction, effectively. Mm-hmm. And you know why should your image not be a part of that? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's part of if you do the crime, you do the time, and part of that part of that that punishment. And you hear it all the time in courts. Judges will say, "Well, I gave him a year off because of all the publicity surrounding the case, and it's going to affect him for the rest mm-hmm. of his life." They actually take that into account in court yeah. all the time. People find that very annoying, but that that is the way it is. So, I think, in 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 fairness, a, a picture. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's and you see, like back before the criminal courts of justice, the new ones were opened. We were all down in those old court buildings and usually the the, the custody or, or people came in and yeah. out the front door and there was an opportunity for the photographers to capture an image yeah. as they were coming in and out of court. The new courts of justice were built and anybody in custody is driven in underneath yeah. them yeah. and brought up into the court. I mean, you're not were... legally allowed to take a photograph within the building. You can no, only no, take it not. outside. Was, photographers made careers from standing in the third or fourth floor of Greek Street flats. Yeah. They shoot oh, really? in the back of the Bridewell, yeah. Or, oh, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, like they the way you did every it. Saturday, yeah. Or now they're taking advantage of air COVID at times and wearing masks. <laughs> and <putting laughs> hoods up. You're still at that. Yeah, you, you yeah. still see photographs every week of some somebody coming out of court with the full gear on. No. <laughs> but I do think that, I know Niall was saying that, um, you know, you do, or you were saying that they do offer up spokespeople after the fact. Yeah. But it's, it, it isn't that often and they don't do it the way they do in the NCA where they put out a statement, particularly on, on a big case. Yeah. And I don't know if that's an Irish thing because we don't really like to blow our own trumpet or pat ourselves on the back as much. But I do think that is something that they, particularly with the high profile Mm -hmm. 
criminals, gangland criminals. This know. is it. And it's the amount of years and, and money that goes into them. I, I looked back on a story recently about 2016 and what it was going to cost this new crackdown and organised crime. That year alone was 100 million, the yeah. budget, right? Yeah. That is a lot of money. Where, you know, where is it going? What is, when you see a conviction at the end of it. Now, when I went over to the UK for the conviction of, he pleaded guilty, Bomber Kavanagh. On a practical level as a journalist, right, I came away with, from the courtroom, I was given what was essentially the book of evidence. All the journalists who were there were given it. This wasn't a kind of a under the counter thing. It wasn't a secret deal. In it were photographs inside Bomber Kavanagh's house when they raided, showing the level of bling, I suppose, that they had. There was photographs of the handbags. There was photographs of the couches where they went down and found 10 and 20,000 in in wrapped up in notes. There was a structure of the group, a tree of who was at the top of it and where all the other people were. There was photographs of the machinery that he had, you know, manipulated so as he could use it to transport the drugs in and the money back out of the country. There was the full sort of... um, the charges in in their proper language that were put to them. And then there was the full detail of where the case had started and how it had culminated and how they had built this case against him. So I brought it home, Mm. probably on the Ryanair flight, which would be heavier than my bag, right? And what came of it was definitely I got a very good understanding of that investigation, where it started, how it operated, you know, the amount of kind of levels of resources that went into it. Did a three-part podcast here, the story, the long read story of Bomber Cavanagh. That was a couple of years ago. There was a documentary made, but it was all really accurate information. Yeah. And they followed up with what they provided me with at the time, Matt Horn, who was the deputy director of the uh, NCA. And one of the actual on the ground investigators was provided for me for interview. Why wouldn't you want that out there? Why wouldn't you? It's such a long yeah. time to work on and gather that evidence and it's in the public interest as well to know what these people are capable of. Totally. I mean, what about the, the Regency tapes which we listen to? Like, you know, is there any reason that they weren't released? Well, well, is there any reason why they wouldn't be released? Well, there is because the courts were asked at the time by a media organisation, mm. maybe it was ours, mm. for the transcripts actually. Yeah, yeah. And because they weren't asked for at a particular time in the courts, yeah. the, the judges denied yeah. giving out the transcripts. Yeah. Now, between all the journalists that were there typing yeah, yeah. frantically, <laughs> we managed to put together, I think, between everybody yeah. um, most of it. Most of it. Yeah. And most of it is there. But the actual tapes released, no. I think you can apply to the courts for that kind of stuff. Uh, well, you won't get it. I Separate mean. agency, like is, is though. Is there a reason why, like, is, does, is anybody, you know, it's been heard in court, it's done and done yeah. it, you know. Is oh, I any, think it should be given. Yeah, is, there any, is there any logical reason, is there any damage to be done, for example, by those tapes. Now, I suppose in that pace, case, when you think about it, there was no conviction. There wasn't, but I mean, it, they've been heard. They have been judged. heard in court, yeah. I'm just saying, anyway, I wonder, will... Do you think they might need them in future? Well, that could be it as well. And but maybe, that's just but a specific... We're talking about in those tapes. There has been other stuff that, yeah. I mean, there was certainly recordings done in the plot to kill Gary Hanley, which I heard, including Alan Wilson having conversations with... Uh, Joseph Kelly, yeah. um, his co-accused, they were waiting outside Gary Hanley's house to shoot him and they were having conversations about what they were buying the kids for Christmas. It was I mean, that extraordinary. That is stuff that the NCA do release, I mean. But I've yeah. heard that and, and I have to repeat how I've heard yeah, that again yeah. and again. But for people to hear that, yeah. I think it gives you an incredible exactly. insight well, when you hear that yeah, and, and to what it's like, that world, and what you're dealing with and how normalised murder is in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it really does have an impact. And that's the stuff the NCA, I, I suppose, look, will people be ringing in, crying, poor old journalists having to work too hard to get pictures? Do you think we'll be... Well, I was going to say, people? I was going to say we might be putting the Sunday world out of work because... <laughs> yeah. Poor <laughs> many, journalists can't even afford a pair of glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because so many stories we do per week on, you know, knocking first on picture. the doors of criminals yeah. and getting for his picture. So maybe. Yeah, well, maybe. I mean, there's that. There's always that. But I yeah. suppose in a way you still have to package what you'd get into exactly. yeah. a, a, into a proper story, be it audio, visual or the written word, yeah. which I will think, still remain skill. But well, like you see over time that because media organisations are shrinking, they have less resources and less time. It's going to be incumbent on, on the guards and other 
branches of the state to actually sell their stories to the media in yeah. a way that they didn't used to have to do because the media just aren't able to to do what they, they once were, if you know what I mean. But like, but I, I did a broadcast course years ago and mm. I remember the beginning of it was like a very eminent broker. She'd worked in RTE and she'd worked in the BBC and she ran this course. And she started it off by telling us that 95% of what happens on radio every day on these talk shows is coming from PR. Yeah. So it's the people out there feeding that. Yeah. yeah. And of course, when you think of that, doesn't that make so much sense? It does. Maybe 5% of it is a radio show having gone out and generated yeah. their yeah. own news. So news in the background, all sorts of news, not just crime, is generated obviously by something occurring mm -hmm. or something, you know, yeah. Take away crime there for a second, a product. Well, politics as well. Like politi all politics, that. Politics contact political parties or spin But should doctors. they have advisors and spin doctors yeah. and PR Pushing people to forward. push, push yeah. But forward. that doesn't happen when it comes to the guards, you know. No, no. although uh, there is, there are a lot of guard statements coming in every day. Not every day, but like very regularly. And they do probably end up on our websites a lot more than they would have in the past when you mm. just had papers because that was when people were you know, had more time to investigate things and, you know, they would want yeah. more. They wouldn't be happy just to, whereas now the basic seizures are going up online. Very so the true. guards are probably yeah. doing well out of that. In they terms certainly of are. Ordering their investigations and getting appeals out there. And the media and in particular websites are a hungry monster. They need to be fed mm -hmm. constantly during the day. Yeah. You guys are constantly saying like it's just never ending. It's yeah, just, you can't just have one good story and leave it there. You have to have. Keep changing it, keep yeah. moving yeah. it. And you know yourself as a, as a consumer of it, if you go on to the website and it's the same story, yeah, yeah, exactly. And people are interested in those guard seizures, aren't they? they, are. they as they well, are. they do. We see your traffic that they do. You get a little bit of a yeah. On this is people have a you know yeah. There's yeah. be a local traffic as well for yeah ten grand in 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 County Westmead. There be. Do you know what I mean? Is oh, that like course. your man down the road? Is always, <laughs> yeah, where are they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, have always. they given an address on that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you were the same here in the big smoke that yeah. we like to know where it is. If something yeah. happens in your local area, yeah, aren't no, you? No, I know now if something oh. happens in Clondalk and the family can't go be. <laughs> no, but if something happens out in Stalky or something. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that would be. Uh, Everybody's sending on all WhatsApp know messages and, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah, look, it was a busy week and. Uh, that's a kind of a, wait, maybe we'll be heard someday. <laughs> our our yeah. little complaints <laughs> about, I mean, we're actually, you know what I mean? We're just, we're just, just we're just normal we just people, help. are we? Yeah. <laughs> but um, right. anyway, yeah. Um, look, maybe it's sort of that kind of thing. Maybe that refusal to release that, that mugshot opens up a conversation and starts to yeah. make people, I don't think we're going to have marches on the street backing journalists to get the no, 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 no. Gardaí or whatever no, but it's no. maybe worth just having that discussion to explain to people exactly. I think people not working in you know there's things it's like any job you do yeah. mm -hmm. you do it and you think everybody understands it but they don't no. understand no. what no, goes on we, in the we background. We constantly get a thing of why, you know, you're not putting up a picture of him because yeah. he's, he's a relative of that person. Yeah. But of course, if, once we have a picture, we put them up. If, if, if there's them. a court case, you know of what course. I mean? Of course, um, yeah. So, but, yeah. And of course, we often, the reason we don't have, we have pictures of some and not others is because they might generally, because they get bail, yeah. come out the front door and somebody takes a picture. If they're just put straight away, you'll never get a picture, you know. So that, that. That is that reason. Yeah. But there's always inspires conspiracy theories that yeah. you pictured this guy and you didn't picture this other guy, you know? Yeah, and I think journalists accepted that's part of their job that they have to get, you know, if they want their stories to be more prominent, they have yes. to get pictures and get them verified and all that kind of thing. But I guess your point is that if there are mugshots there available yeah. and the guardie, uh, the case is done, why wouldn't you want that out there so people can know what they're dealing with? Exactly. You know? And give the media the correct information to work with rather than, you know, sometimes you're scrabbling around, you're sort of, I mean, mostly you're, you have your own contacts and you always still will. But the factual information, like what I found really useful from the NCA on the bomber case was the dates, yeah. things like that, yeah. the locations of where raids were happening. So you weren't kind of, you know, and anyway, then you put your story, it's your own knowledge that makes the story come alive but you're getting the, the the good factual details. Anyway, we're giving the kind of the guard, the guardian are coming in with a silver medal on this. <laughs> and I'm afraid the, the uh, 
Well, if it's a medal for everybody, the PS and I are getting <laughs> bronze, aren't they? But, um, At least they're getting something. <laughs> getting a team they're, participation. They're getting a participation. It's more, than we, exactly. it's more than we get from them a lot of the time, to yeah, be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, right. Listen, thanks a million guys. Thanks, thanks Nicola. Nicola. I'm Nicola Talent and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts.